This video features a collaboration with my friend The Masked Man. He makes insightful videos on Attack on Titan which inspired me to talk about the series. After this video definitely go and check out his channel. Within a story you can have multiple themes. These themes often recur in the aim of providing a message to its readers within the overall narrative of the story. Themes are ideas which are vital to a story. Themes can be often summarised into a single word like death, love and redemption. In this video I want to look at one of the several themes featured within the very popular manga and anime series Attack on Titan. The theme of freedom will be focused on in this video. I have followed Attack on Titan since the anime first premiered in 2013 and I've felt like doing a video on it for the longest while. The aim with this video is to explain how the series establishes this theme within the story, how freedom is relatable to its target audience and how it implements this theme within the concepts featured in the story. I want to also convey how a couple of the characters featured in the story embody this theme in their personal desires and motivations which propel their character arcs through the story. Attack on Titan is set in a world where the last remnants of humanity have sealed themselves off from the larger world. They reside within a small territory which is encased by three walls which partition each section of this territory. The outermost wall is called Maria, within that is Wall Rose and the innermost wall is called Sheena. This is where the royalty and noblemen of society reside. They were forced to seclude themselves away from the larger world and hide behind large walls which mysteriously appeared 100 years ago. This was to protect the last of humanity from the threat that awaits them beyond the outermost wall. In Attack on Titan, the threat appears in the form of large humanoid man-eaters. They don't take the form of monsters, but rather they appear to have been created in our image. The concept of the Titans according to interviews with the series author was inspired by the thought that the most familiar and scary animal on the planet is indeed humans. The Titans according to the lore of the series appeared out of nowhere. Not much is known about this mysterious threat other than they appeared and brought humanity to the brink of extinction. The last few survivors of the human race reside within the walls. They are stripped of their freedom, living with a false sense of security which can easily be robbed from them if something were to happen to the walls that are protecting them. Within the walls, a select few dare to dream about the wonders of the world that humanity is being robbed from witnessing. The theme of freedom is adopted by these characters who dream of seeing the outside world. The desire to be free from imprisonment to see the beauty of the world is introduced to us through the character of Armin Arlet, who as a child spent his time curiously researching about the outside world. He has an intrigue for the mysterious world beyond the walls that the rest of humanity seems to have forgotten about. Because humanity has accepted their fate and live comfortably with being caged within the walls, living in ignorance of the beauty that awaits them on the other side of their fears. There is a price that must be paid however for those who dare to dream and are willing to venture outside of the walls. I will cover this later on in the video. Armin learns from his grandfather's book about the possible outside world which contains large salt lakes in the form of oceans which extend further than the eye can see. A salt lake so large that no merchant could deplete it in their lifetime. As a young boy he reads of the deserts and other landscapes that broaden his horizons. This instills within him a desire to be free from the barricading walls and the threat of the titans so that he may one day see these beautiful fabled sights for himself. The story of Attack on Titan juggles this theme of freedom alongside multiple others throughout the different arcs of the series. This theme of freedom however is one of the major elements of the story that drive and motivate the characters to break free and overcome their fears of the titans. Freedom is a central theme of the story from the very first arc called The Fall of Shiganshina through to the seventh arc titled Return to Shiganshina. The attainment of freedom is subject to learning more about the titans in order to defeat them. The existence of the titans understandably limits humanity from dreaming about that which is beyond their grasp. The thought of the world beyond the walls for the majority of people is associated with death, not freedom or liberation. They live in a constant state of fear of the outside world because of the threat that awaits them on the other side of the walls. The threat of the titans is so overbearing and intimidating that it stifles humanity and their natural curiosity to explore and understand the world. Their fear is so deep rooted that it causes them to ridicule and bully those who dare to dream. This is shown to us through the ridicule and bullying that Armin endured as a child for speaking about the wonders of the world which await them. A successful story implements elements which are relatable to its target audience. Relatability can even help to extend the appeal of a story beyond its target demographic. I want to now go into how Attack on Titan became a wild 
wild runaway success, focusing on the relatability of freedom and how the series leverages this theme to garner critical approval and mass appeal from its many fans across the globe. Freedom is the ability to act without restrictions, to essentially be free to change your present circumstances in whatever way you desire. In our own history, wars were fought for the freedoms of our future generations, from enslavement and tyrannical or oppressive regimes. During the Second World War, the President of the United States at the time, Franklin Roosevelt, addressed the nation with a speech on the Four Freedoms. He proposed a set of fundamental freedoms which he believed everyone in the world was entitled to enjoy. Freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom from want, and freedom from fear. The desire to be free from fear is the most relevant to the story of Attack on Titan. Roosevelt described this particular freedom as a desire for a worldwide effort to reduce their armaments to a point where no nation will be in a position to threat or aggressively oppress any other nation in the world. Fear in this context is actualized when countries with power in the form of stockpiles of armaments impose their will on others through threatening to attack other nations. This fear of political and national suicide can bend the will of any weaker nation who does not have the power to oppose the threat. As I mentioned previously, fear in the context of Attack on Titan arises from the threat imposed on humanity from the man-eating titans. Fear and freedom are linked, through fear being the limiting factor to attaining freedom. Fear is what robs people from their liberation. It arises from uncertainty and inherently being afraid of the unknown. We are taught about the consequences of the absence of freedom when we look back at our own history. We compare our current standard of living to that of bygone eras of Nazism, forced conquest where ideologies are spread through the sword, or by enslaving a peoples for the colour of their skin. Eric Fromm describes the concept of freedom in his book Escape from Freedom. He states that freedom is distinguished into two connotations, one being positive and the other negative. The negative connotation arises from applying the term freedom to escaping that which limits us and our sense of liberation. This is described as freedom from. This context describes how we have historically fought for freedom through examples such as freedom from sexism, slavery, racism, and dictatorships. However, Eric Fromm further adds that this disruptive force can be counterintuitive if it is not accompanied by a positive creative element to channel this energy into. The positive connotation is described as freedom too. After being freed from oppression, people leverage this opportunity to express their creativity and finally be treated as equals. When people are freed from authority, they do however experience feelings of hopelessness, unless they adopt this positive connotation of freedom in order to enact a new regime of power which will replace the old oppressive order of authority. This may or may not be an improvement on the prior way of doing things, as people are prone to accept another authoritarian system which will ease their feelings of hopelessness and uncertainty by prescribing to them rules on how to think or how to act. Externally it appears different, but intrinsically it is identical to the old authoritarian power that they free themselves from. Eric Fromm describes this as the never-ending cycle of negative freedom that society submits to. The concept of freedom is deep-rooted in our history, and this makes it a very relatable theme to include in a story of uprising and going against the accepted norms of subjugated society. The first seven arcs of Attack on Titan cover humanity adopting the negative connotation and desiring freedom from the Titans and the Walls. Each character has their personal reasons for desiring freedom, whether if it is to live abundantly with plentiful food and crops outside of the walls, or to experience the beauty of the outside world. But if we look at it beyond the obvious freedom from the walls, we have a character like Eren who ultimately is striving for freedom from the Titans, and his own self-appointed duty of vengeance which drives his character to desire to kill every last Titan after his mother is killed by one. He has burdened himself with this duty and the only way to relieve himself is by taking back that which they have lost, their homeland, their territory, and defeating the threat of the Titans. Eren is however aware of the world beyond the walls and understands his friend Armin's desire to see over the horizon, to marvel at the wonders of the world that he has dreamt about. In order to actualize their desires of freedom, the people living within the walls rely on a branch of the military who venture outside of the walls, to learn more about the mysterious threat keeping humanity caged within the three walls. This is of course the survey cops, who symbolize the last hope of mankind against the titans. Let's now look at how freedom is embodied by the soldiers of the survey cops, and how the series takes advantage of recurring imagery to further convey this theme to us. The survey cops undertake the study of titans, exploring the world beyond the walls and the daunting task of engaging in combat against the titans. Using their vertical maneuvering gear, they literally spread their wings and fly freely outside of the walls, daring to free humanity from their caged existence. At the beginning of the series, we learn that this division of the military has had little success. There is an incredibly high mortality rate. While Eren was a child 
child, he looked on at them admirably as they returned from their expeditions. The people of the time, however, deemed them to be offering themselves up to the Titans as a free meal, judging their actions of exploring beyond the walls to be foolish, and only resulting in needless deaths. The Survey Corps knew very little about the Titans, but they held onto the hope that one day their efforts would lead to the change of the world, a world where humanity has regained that which was taken from them, their freedom. They are responsible for reclaiming lost human territory from the Titans. Before the colossal and armoured Titan appeared and breached Wall Maria, the Survey Corps explored the outside world but were unable to get far because of the high mortality rate due to attacks from the Titans. The insignia that the Survey Corps proudly wear is called the Wings of Freedom. Like I mentioned earlier, this symbolises caged birds who have finally gained the courage to spread their wings and fly in the face of their fears. Due to the risk and high mortality rate associated with the Survey Corps, people are discouraged from joining them. We see this in Chapter 21 when the 104th Training Corps were asked to enrol. Only 10% of the Training Corps stood firm in their resolve to aid Commander Erwin to fight for the sake of humanity. Among this 10% was Erin, Mikasa and Armin, characters with a sense of purpose who are able to dedicate themselves to the advancement of humanity find themselves within the Survey Corps. The members under this division don't join for money or to seek elevated ranks, or for glory and recognition. This makes its members amongst the most sincere and finer remnants of humanity. They are determined to fight for freedom, even at the cost of their own lives, because that is what it means to be a member of the Survey Corps. We often see birds depicted within the manga and the anime of Attack on Titan. They, like I mentioned earlier, symbolise freedom. Their ability to fly allows them to soar across the sky without boundaries. They are able to fly over the very walls that humanity cannot leave. They can venture in and out of the walls. They see everything from their vantage point. Further analysing the recurring imagery of birds, we understand that from their vantage point, they are above all of the problems that humanity must endure. The concerns below them matter not. They are the best examples of carefree existence. The fear of being caged is not a concern for the bird. It is so free that the worries of humanity are above it. Nothing can limit or take away its freedom. Even in the first episode of the anime, the very first scene that we see is of birds flying across the sky. This is then reflected in Eren's eyes, which symbolises his desire for freedom, and establishes this as a theme of the series even before seeing a single titan. I spoke a lot about how freedom is desire to escape the walls, but what happens when freedom is attained? Is it truly a desirable concept that the characters within the series should strive towards? Will freedom lead to peace, or will it cause more problems to occur via attaining answers, which lead to further questions? If we break free from our oppressors, what becomes our new purpose for existence? Can we really make the transition from the negative freedom to the positive freedom, without causing history to repeat itself? Obtaining freedom does not result in peace. The battle for freedom is against monsters, whereas the battle for peace is against people and their differing ideals. The positive freedom is the freedom to fulfil the heart's desire, which previously had been restricted by the necessity to adopt the negative freedom, to be free from the titans and the walls. To understand and better explain this change from a negative freedom to a positive freedom, we need to look at how characters embody this theme into their character arcs, analysing how their desires to enact freedom can be either productive or destructive for the future of humanity. In her book, Creating Character Arcs, K.M. Wyland states that character arcs not only influence the story, but they have a direct influence on the theme of a story. Characters like Armin and Eren are examples of characters whose individual arcs directly influence the theme of freedom. I'm going to hand it over to the masked man who's going to explain how Eren adopts negative freedom. After the Colossal Titan makes his first appearance and breaks down Wall Maria, the false sense of freedom that people were enjoying within the walls was shattered. Like the narrator states at the end of the first episode of Attack on Titan, on that day, humanity received a grim reminder of how they lived in fear of the Titans and were destined to be trapped within the walls. All it would take to break humanity's false sense of peace and tranquility is for the wall protecting them to be breached. This is what angers the protagonist of the series' heir and to take action. He is frustrated that they can never enjoy peace and freedom as long as the Titans exist. This coupled with his mother being killed by a Titan causes him to desire to kill every single Titan. He adopts the negative freedom into his character as he desires freedom from Titans. At a very young age, he is forced to realize that Titans are the enemy of humanity. He associated humanity sitting and doing nothing, living comfortably with the false sense of freedom as cattle who are waiting to be consumed by the Titans due to their complacency. And his desire to be free from the Titans result in his incredible willpower and sense of purpose. During his evaluation while in the training corps, he was among the top 10 of the 104th Southern Division. 
He was stated not to be highly skilled in anything, but he has a strong sense of purpose, twice that of his peers. Through his effort, he was able to improve his proficiency and improve his grades. In his childhood, after Armin showed him a book which detailed the amazing outside world, he developed a friendship with him, also desiring to see the world beyond the walls. He developed admiration for the Survey Corps, referring to them as his heroes. He desired to join them in the pursuit for his freedom to explore the world. Aaron and Armin's desires for freedom were very similar, up until Aaron's mother was killed by a titan. This of course causes him to desire freedom from the titans, as opposed to freedom to explore the wonders of the world. His definition of freedom shifts to the negative connotation, and propels his character arc to the point that he is able to revive Armin at the end of the return to Shiganashi arc, so that his friend could see the ocean they so desperately fought to reach. After defeating every last titan and learning the truth within his father's basement, Aaron comes to realize a shift in his frame of mind. Due to the nature of the truth that is revealed to him, Aaron learns that he is not truly free. Despite being free from the titans, the true enemy awaits him beyond the ocean. The people of the walls will not truly be free as long as they're considered to be devils by the people of Marley. Aaron realizes that he thought that the other side of the ocean represented freedom. He had still shared this with Armin up until learning the truth. Now beyond the ocean, he sets his sights on another enemy who was the cause behind humanity being forced to hide behind the walls. They are responsible for the titans which ate and killed so many. His anger towards the titans seemed to have ceased after learning the truth. When he heads to the ocean, he sees a titan, but instead of showing anger, he refers to it as one of them, an Eldian who had been turned into a titan by the Marleyan government. He now seeks to kill the enemies of Paradise Island so that they may finally attain freedom and be free from persecution and threat. His character appears to go to unethical means in his desire to destroy his enemies. His negative aspect of freedom, his desire for freedom from his enemies, has resulted in him forsaking his humanity and his morals for this purpose. His intentions are good, to give the people of Paradise Island freedom. However, the way that he has executed them after crossing the ocean is, well, questionable. Now let's look at Armin and his positive freedom. Ever since he was a child, Armin was fascinated by the outside world. He learned about the world beyond the walls from a forbidden book owned by his grandfather. He was bullied for his interests in the outside world, but was protected by Eren, who he had also shown the book to. After joining the Survey Corps, he desired to make an impact on the world, and to see the outside world with his own eyes. His sense of curiosity never changes, as he desires to overcome the Titans in order to obtain freedom to explore the world. He embodies the positive aspect of freedom, which explains how humanity can make use of their newfound freedom once it has been attained. Armin's sense of analysis and forward planning helps the Survey Corps and demonstrates his conviction to fight for the future of humanity. In Chapter 27, he understands that the world he inhabits is cruel and unforgiving. He realizes if you desire to surpass monsters, then you need to be able to sacrifice anything. This includes being able to forsake even your own humanity. He admires Erwin and his leadership for being able to sacrifice for the greater good and survival of humanity. Armin chooses to act based on logic rather than emotions, which is contrasted with his friend Eren. Despite the trauma that he has endured while growing up, Armin remains empathetic and sensitive. His kind-hearted nature prevents him from giving up his humanity. This is an inner conflict that he endures. Throughout the series, he is consistently kind and very intuitive, which results in him questioning the morality of his peers. In Chapter 72, we see a flashback of Armin speaking of the ocean enthusiastically with Mikasa and Eren. He embodies the theme of freedom through desiring it to see the ocean that he dreamt of as a child. He eventually relinquishes his desire to see the ocean in chapter 82, thinking that Eren will have to fulfill his desire for his sake. Armin's body is scorched by the Colossal Titan, as he acts selflessly as a decoy for Eren to take down the Colossal Titan. He sacrifices himself to distract Bertolt. He hands his dream and desire for freedom over to Eren, as his body is charred. Armin is chosen to be revived instead of Eren, and finally gets to fulfill his dream of seeing the ocean. His freedom to explore one aspect of the world he dreamt of causes him to feel incredible joy after having accomplished his goal. The difference between Armin and Eren is that Eren has focused his efforts for freedom into ridding the world of the Titans, while Armin is focused on the fruits of freedom like wanting to see the ocean, arctic snow, and the deserts. This is the contrast between positive and negative freedom. They both desire to see the ocean. This wish was fulfilled in chapter 90. Armin genuinely wanted to appreciate the beauty of the sea, while for Eren he associates freedom and the ocean as a means to be free from the threat of the Titans. He no longer has to be concerned about humanity living in constant fear. 
Just analyze chapter 90 and you will see that Armin had tears of happiness in his eyes, while Eren reached out for the enemy across the ocean, setting his sights on the next enemy to be free from. Armin achieves his freedom to experience the ocean while Eren is unable to enjoy this small freedom, because his negative perspective of it makes him feel focused on the Marleans. Once again, negative freedom is desiring to be free from that which shackles you, contrasted with positive freedom, which is the desire to act freely and the focus on the positive actions to benefit humanity based on free will. The difference between Eren and Armin's perspectives of freedom is focused on during the manga, and we will get to see this next year when Attack on Titan Season 4 premieres. This conversation on freedom is far from over, and I would love to make a follow-up video further discussing the differences between Eren and Armin, along with how a few other characters perceive freedom in the series. And lastly, I'd like to once again thank The Masked Man for his involvement in this video. I highly recommend that you all go and check out his channel for more insightful videos like this one. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, then please consider supporting my channel on Patreon. I have multiple tiers with rewards including access to an exclusive Discord server, video scripts, as well as being the first to know about unreleased upcoming videos. Thank you for your time and whatever you choose to contribute, I will appreciate and it will mean a lot to me.